All right, geeks, thanks for checking out My Dream Legends Wave. This is a new show on our channel. So the premise for this show is to discuss Marvel Legend Waves that I would love to see Hasbro make. Additionally, through your comments and input, maybe we can even get Hasbro to listen and make the figures that we collectors actually want to see. All right, so you ready? Let's go. So going forward, generally in these episodes, when I'm doing a dream wave, a wave will consist of seven to eight figures that build a bath and a two or three pack and a deluxe edition. Now I may change that up from time to time, but that'll be the format generally. All right, so in this episode, we're looking at perhaps the greatest era of Thor comics, the Simonson era. So Walt Simonson made Thor an incredibly exciting solo book when I was growing up and probably first time ever Thor was really exciting. That book traditionally struggled throughout its history. Um, even though Thor was a popular character, his solo adventures just never popped. And several times it was on the verge of cancellation. When Walt Simonson took it over in the 80s, sales exploded because the stories were different, they were grandiose, and man were they exciting. And they introduced some of the greatest characters from the Thor lore, including Beta Ray Bill. His work on Thor is regarded as not only one of the greatest Thor runs ever, but one of the greatest comic book runs ever of all time, and that's why I think there should be a Marvel Legend Wave dedicated to that run. Alright, so first up, the eight figures that build the bath. First and foremost, I think we should do the original Throg, which is Thor Frog. And if you remember from Thor Ragnarok, that... Thor made a joke about uh, Loki turning him into a frog. That actually happened in the comic books. And Thor was actually a huge frog dressed like Thor with the power of Thor. Now, eventually there was another frog that wasn't the original Thor, but we're not going to worry about that. All right, next up is a villain. And I think that villain should be Curse. He was originally known as Algrim the Strong. And he was betrayed by Malekith, but I believe, if I remember correctly, he was uh, framed. Malekith framed Thor to make him think Thor was the one that betrayed him. The Beyonder from Secret Wars 2 actually took Algrim the Strong and turned him into Curse. And if you if you don't know who Curse is, think of uh, what Doomsday meant to Superman, um, just on a little bit smaller scale. But when he first showed up, he was beating Thor's butt left and right. And he, he just has the look. Look at him. I mean, that would make a dope figure. All right, next up, Brillo Bones Thor in his battle armor. So Thor um, got into it with Hela, and Hela cursed him with brittle bones, and his bones were made like glass. So he would go into battle, and as you can see in this picture here, stuff that never happened to him before, like getting hurt, broken bones, like he's getting torn up. So he had to have this armor fashion just to kind of hold his bones together and be able to function and still be the mighty Thor. And one of my favorite uh, comics, I think it was Avengers 277, Thor was coming into the mansion after the Master of Evil had taken over and Mr. Hyde rammed into his chest and the wasp was sitting on his shoulder and Thor flinched when he hit him. And she was like, are you okay? Because normally somebody as weak as Mr. Hyde, you know, he would just bat away. Anyway, this armor's badass. Um, and I think this figure would look fantastic. All right, next up, Ball of the Brave. Thor's best friend, which was later retconned to be his brother. And he was for a time the king of Asgard after um, Odin disappeared in Ragnarok in the 80s. And I believe that this is the armor that they should use, of course, the Simonson armor, because that armor is fantastic. A little bit uh, gaudy, but fantastic. All right, so this Loki, I don't know what to call him. I call it Battle Armor Loki, because this is the, the armor he used during Ragnarok to battle Surtur, but he also wore it outside of that. But I don't think I've ever seen a legend with this armor. I'd have to double check. I think I have most of the Lokis and I don't remember this armor being used. But I love the large horns, which we've seen before, but these are golden horns and those shoulder pads and the cape and the cuff boots. It's just really 80s. And I think that would look fantastic and really pop. 
All right, so I mentioned earlier that Beta Ray Bill was a creation of Walt Simonson. But what a lot of people don't know is before he was actually the Thor-like enchanted Beta Ray Bill, he was just regular Beta Ray Bill, and he was a Corbinite, which is his race. But this is what he looked like before he was transformed. And the cane he was given, which was the uh, alternate form of Stormbreaker, allowed him to transform back and forth because he was experimented on and I believe, I remember he was uh, given cybernetic implants to be a warrior saver for his race. So this enchantment allows him to look like he did before he was surgically manipulated. Now for another bad guy, I would say the executioner. We got a MCU executioner, but a comic book executioner would be even better. I don't need to say anything else. Just look at these pictures here. Now, how about Odin and his battle armor? This is the armor he wore uh, during the Ragnarok story arc, and he and his sons were going head to head with Surtur. Of course, the Avengers were there too, but they weren't the main focus. Um, I don't think he's been represented here. I remember there was an Odin bath a few years ago, but that was just like the All Father King sitting on his throne type outfit. This battle ready armored up odin is dope i want the beard just like that i want the eyes just like that i mean you can't even beat that and the bath for this wave would be surter and i'm talking about not the half-ass bath that has has been doing i mean like toy biz giant size bath that's why i think the wave should be eight deep so that way they can put more pieces in the legs need to be long they need to take up the entire length of the box <laughs> like they used to. And Surtur would be dope if he looked like he did in the comic book. I mean, fiery crown and all. I mean, Hasbro, let's do it. Do it, Hasbro. All right, so of course, the three pack that they should float out, uh, probably a fan channel exclusive, would be the Warriors 3. We need a proper Warriors 3 set. There are a lot of custom Warriors 3s floating around the net that look really good. So Hasbro could even maybe commission some of those guys to do the sculpt thing. Um, and matter of fact, here's one here. I think this is an awesome example. And then the deluxe figure for that wave, I would have to say, would be Ulick. Now, Ulick is an elf, but he is one powerful elf. And I don't remember if he was actually utilized during the Simpson era, but I just threw him in because, you know, Hasbro doesn't follow all those rules. So, yeah, if it's a Simpson wave, we can get away with one figure that's not there. But I just think a new Ulick would be awesome because Ulick came as part of, I believe it was the, um, the Jane Foster San Diego Comic-Con exclusive set. Uh, not entirely sure. I actually just got that set a few weeks ago, but I haven't popped it open yet. My memory may be failing me. But I know that there isn't a single figure in the six-inch Legends line, so I think that would be great. All right, so what do you think about this wave? Sound off in the comments. Let me know what you would change. Let me know what you disagree with. What do you think would be a kick-butt Simonson Thor wave? All right, till next time, geeks, geek out.